what I'd like to do now is just demonstrate quickly the uh, setup of a Pulse project and interfacing that Pulse data through the function organizer to PTA and uh, demonstrating what you see when we have a go-no-go -no -go situation or a, uh, a test case that fails at an upper control limit. Here we have our Pulse system, Pulse front end, and uh, the computer that has Pulse Lab Shop on it and also the PTA software. What I will do now is demonstrate a simple quick setup of doing pass fail on an auto spectrum. We'll be using just a signal generator to uh, drive the data, but it'll be simple. We have two channels plugged into our Pulse front end. Here I'm showing Pulse Lab Shop. We have a simple setup in Pulse Lab Shop where we have the measurement organizer set up with two channels in the signal group and we're using a CPB analyzer. Function organizer has the, just the default setup for auto spectrum of signal one and we'll add uh, auto spectrum uh, for signal two here. We'll insert one more. So that will be in there. Then we can see th here's just a simple uh, CPB of the, uh, of the signal that's coming in. It's actually the same signal coming into both channels so there's really not going to be a lot of excitement on that but the whole point is for it to be simple. Save my project. I'm, in this case I'm saving the demo project but it does, it's not required. Saved it under the name project1.pls. That's the default. I exit the lab shop software. Now I go run PTA. Here we can see what the PTA icon looks like in this case. So you see the PTA and the Pulse Lab Shop on the desktop. Simply double click PTA. I'm going to create a new project. In this new project we will uh, put in the folder D colon uh, Pulse Launch Demo or PTA Launch Demo. I'm going to select that and we'll call it PTA Launch launch the first thing we need to do is create a new model I'll call it launch model this will be the product under test the model of you can have several models as part of the PTA uh, setup and we will uh, I'll explain that later I'm going to create now an acceptance test. In the acceptance test case, this is going to define where we do our go/no-go no go, or what we call our test cases. Um, so our acceptance test, I'm going to just call it test one, and I'll give it a fault. Uh, call it PTA launch as a setup label. Now we go browse for the PTA project file. Here we have it. Uh, it defaults to the PTA to the folder. And we can find project1.pls. This is the project that we just saved in a, P in a Pulse. I say save. I say next. And the next thing it does, PTA will go off and read the Pulse project and the function organizer and list all of the functions that are available in, uh, in the system or in the project. Here we'll see the function organizer, function organizer. The function group is the default. We have auto spectrum one and auto spectrum two. In this case, I'm just going to use, I'm going to add auto spectrum one as my test that we're going to perform our test on. Say next. Post processing data sources, well, you'll learn later, but it allows us to do more statistical analysis and more functions in the data to feed to the go no go. Just going to follow through the wizard, say next, next, and just take all the defaults. Now we have our acceptance test called. PTA launch and you can see that, that we've referenced the function of the function organizer auto spectrum one signal one input as our test case. The next section is is to create our the interface to the PLC. This is what we call our production line setup. Uh, It'll, it's where we can put handshaking in for the uh, to talk back and forth to the PLC. We can get serial numbers of the product under test and so forth. I'm going to quickly go through some steps and uh, magically create the post process. You'll learn more about this as you get involved in training. 
the production we set up. In this case, we're going to auto configure. We're going to get our launch model. It's going to run our test. Say OK. That's going to load the Pulse project when we when the PLC tells us to. In this case, I don't have a PLC. The reason I've got a little key there is for we're going to do keyboard activated. We're going to start this. We get the serial number for the product. We'll default it to the date and time, I believe. We're going to start the analyzer. This is going to tell Pulse to go start acquiring data. It issues the Pulse start command. Put a, an inspect data. In this case, our third octave spectrum is a linear average. As soon as the linear average is complete, inspect the launch model data. We'll bring up a display. We'll tell it we want to display out of spectrum one. We'll actually compute the, uh, we'll tag the data with uh, some uh, go no go information. We're going to save the data to disk. Set the properties of that to store accepted, store rejected. There's all kinds of parameters we can set. Those parameters will be defined whenever uh, you'll learn more about those as you go through training. Uh, we'll now connect our end of test back to, in our case, I'm going to wait for another keyboard input. So when we finish our test, we'll wait for the keyboard so we'll be able to talk a little bit more. And there you have it. I've got a, a test set up.